What if I told you what you're missing in 2023 is a real enemy? You, you're missing an enemy. You may have an enemy, you're not thinking about your enemy. What if I told you your business plan goals, everything you're doing for 2023 logically is not gonna get the best out of you unless if you have a forced opposition or somebody preventing you from having your dreams become a reality. I'm gonna break that down for you today with a few different stories about Messi, Pele, Maradona, and hopefully you'll understand what I mean by you needing to have 10 or so different types of enemies. For some of you that are having a hard time embracing this concept of enemy, stick around. You're going to realize you need an enemy. Everybody has an enemy, including Christians. Wait till I tell you they're enemies and it'll make sense to you. I'm 23 years old. My friends are telling me, let's go to the club. Let's go to the club. Let's go to the club. Girls were coming to my place and I'm focused on a meeting I'm having the next day and they want to stay till God knows what time and be a distraction to me. That is a form of an enemy. If you're trying to get in shape, your friends who are eating junk food and they're trying to give it to you, that is a form of an enemy opposition to your goal of having a six-pack by the time summer comes along and again Christians claiming well this is not a Christian thing to do Christians have an enemy it's called the devil the adversary it is an enemy you're fighting the adversary every space has an enemy by the way the bigger of a thing you want to do in your life the bigger the enemies you're gonna to need to have or you're going to have whether you like it or not I'll give you a story that just happened right now with the World Cup World Cup who wins the World Cup Argentina wins the World Cup who becomes the greatest of all time guy named Messi do you know in a meeting with Pele and Maradona a few years ago Pele and Maradona are standing they forget that the mic is hot Pele is asking Maradona a question you should see this he says hey what can you tell me about Messi I don't know a lot about him what can you tell me about Messi Maradona who is the hero he's the god of soccer in Argentina tell Pele yeah he doesn't have a personality and then they start talking talking he doesn't have a personality of a leader Maradona later on says no one who goes to the bathroom 20 times before a game is a leader Messi's not a leader Messi's not a leader and then Messi this World Cup everybody kept saying why is it that the first time we're seeing Messi play a little angry why is Messi playing with emotions why is he playing this way why is he t talking the way he does the game with Netherlands goes in front of Van Gaal and Van Gaal says hey you guys cannot win with penalties we're gonna beat Argentina with penalties and Messi's the first to kick the goal to score it and the penalty shots while Brazil when they lost Neymar went to go last because he was already out of the game but Messi was in the game he scores the first and then he goes in front of Van Gaal he's standing like this everybody's saying why is Messi doing this in front of Van Gaal and if you look at Van Gaal he's looking this way as if Van Gaal doesn't remember but Van Gaal is also driven by enemies this was a representation of a player 20 years prior to that named Riquelme that Van Gaal got who was a mentor type of a guy to Messi whom Van Gaal publicly humiliated and it's Messi's way of saying I remember boom Riquelme and then he wins he proved Maradona wrong he proved everybody wrong and he proved himself and his country right by now being the greatest of all time but maybe Maradona was right and he's driving him who knows the point is he had to find a real enemy deep down inside to win the prize you want to be the greatest of all time which is Messi now argument is over with Ronaldo went to Saudi Arabia signed a half a billion dollar contract and he's doing what he's doing and Messi imagine being worth 600 million dollars you have every single record possible pretty much you have all these trophies the only thing you're missing is one freaking somebody may say stupid trophy who cares about this but he needed that to become the greatest of all time he had to tap into a real enemy to produce the juice to go after this because the pain the leadership the unification of a team required to achieve this is so above what you really think it is the only thing you can do is you need to find a real enemy that's going to produce those emotions for you so now let's talk about you who are your enemies let me give you a few different types of enemies and you make a decision who drives you and who motivates you one form of an enemy is an ex an ex who left you for another man an ex who left you for another woman an ex who didn't work out an ex who did something to you betrayed you hurt you it's their way of saying i believe there's better men out there than you i believe there's better women out there than you because if she didn't believe that why would she do what she did hello that is one form of an enemy you think you have an enemy that's one by the way this doesn't mean you call her and you text her, you tell her what she is and all this other stuff that's not what this means this stays here no one needs to know it's you you got a point to prove. Maybe she's right, maybe she's not, but you got to do your part. Another enemy could be an ex-business partner. Somebody that you did a 50-50 partnership but didn't work out and you were doing all the work, he wasn't doing all the work and you were making the money for the company, he was not, didn't work out, you got a bankruptcy, something happened to your credit. That is another form of an enemy. An enemy could be a relative, family member, a mom, dad, sibling, somebody said that you can't make it, you're nobody, you're just a regular guy. Those words that a family member or relative said, that is a form 
of an enemy. An enemy could be a manipulator, somebody that came in between your family. I got a lot of manipulators in my family that came in between my mom and my dad. They were manipulators that came between my family. They were enemies to me as a 10 year old kid when both of these sides would say, oh, he's Armenian. The other side would say, he's a Syrian. And I would tell them, there's only two people that matter in my life, my mom and my dad, and you're not a part of it. The only other person is my sister. You guys are relatives. I'm only good to you because of him, and I'm only good to you because of my mom. Nothing more than that, you're an enemy. You split up my family. That drove this 10, 12, 14 year old kid because there's a form of an enemy. Another type of enemy is somebody that quit on you. Maybe somebody was working with you, and all of a sudden they're like, oh, you know what? I'm not gonna work with you. They go to a different place to work with another person. You know what they're saying? There's better opportunities out there than working with you. That is a form of an enemy. Imagine you're a sports team, and a guy says, I wanna go play with the other guy. A guy named Tucker leaves Miami to go to Philadelphia to play with Joel Embiid. Jimmy Butler goes out there on Twitter, calls him out on Twitter because he jumped from team to team to team to team to team. And I'm a fan of this guy. He's a great defender. But to Butler, Tucker's an enemy. You leave me to go over there and you put a nice word? No, publicly you're saying, I think I have a higher chance of winning a championship with Philadelphia than I do with what? With Miami. That is a form of an enemy if you go to a different place. Another one, somebody that forces things on you. It could be an institution, a government that tells you better do this or else. Force, 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 force. That is a form of an enemy. What do you wanna do about it? I was watching Ice Cube say something about he got offered to do a movie, $9 million, you had to turn it down because they forced him. He says, they were forcing me to take the jab, so I had to turn down the movie, $9 million. You should hear when Ice Cube says this on a podcast. It's an obvious enemy for Ice Cube. You think Ice Cube is somebody that's driven by force or freedom. He wants to be left alone. That is his enemy, okay? It's a form of an enemy. Another one may be bullies. You may not like bullies. Maybe you were bullied. Maybe you were bullied in business. I was bullied as a kid and I was bullied in business as well. I played both roles and then I realized what these guys were doing and I learned their games and I saw these big behemoth goliaths in the marketplace that I'm competing against. I said, I got your game, no problem. You're an enemy, you're a target. Let's have some fun together with bullies. Maybe that drives you. It may not drive everybody, but maybe bullies drive you to become strong and they leave you alone. Maybe you don't even wanna bully them back. You just wanna be so strong that they know they cannot mess with you and that drives you. That could be a form of an enemy. Now these other three are all on you because your enemy may be your own ego. You are your own enemy. You get in your own way all the damn time, every time. By the way, Alexander the Great, I have met the enemy, it is I. That statement by Alexander applies to many of us, probably most of us, because we get in our own way of somebody's really trying to lead you and give you direction, you're not receiving it because your ego is getting in the way. Somebody's really trying to challenge you to kind of become a better leader, but you're fighting it. You don't think they're on your side. That is also a form of having an enemy. Another mindset could be that's also on you as an enemy is your scarcity mindset. You're afraid. You're secretly scared. You're secretly that six-year-old kid that is afraid. You know how you used to think you had monsters under your bed? You may be 42 years old today and you still have a form of thinking there's monsters under your bed. You have a scarcity mindset that's holding you back. That is a form of an enemy. That is you versus you. And last but not least, your last enemy. You ready? You're simply content. You're content. Here's a guy named Messi's worth $600 million. Imagine the cars he's got in the garage, beautiful family, kids, goes to restaurants, doesn't pay for it. Everybody wants to have dinner with him. Everybody wants to meet him. Everybody wants to interview him. Everybody wants his attention. Living a dream life. Anybody in the world would say Messi's life is a dream life. But to Messi, deep down inside by himself, everybody tells him how great he is. By himself when he's in the bathroom, nobody's around, he says, you're content. You've convinced yourself you don't need this trophy. You know how sometimes you talk to NBA players, do you need to win the NBA championship to be considered one of the greatest point guards of all time? I don't think I need that championship. Contentment the language. Even Barkley, who never won a championship, he himself said, if you don't win a championship, you can't be in those categories. You have to win a championship. Barkley, who could manipulate it to kind of favor himself, said, no, you need to win a championship to get that level of respect, right? Messi has to sit there and say, I think you're content, man. He's saying it to himself. Nobody else can tell him that. Who's gonna tell Messi you're content? Tell me one person qualified to tell Messi he's content. There's only one person qualified to tell him that. Only one. It's himself. And maybe you're content with where you are and you're like not willing to recreate yourself and improve. And you go into a new year, another contentment type of a, I'm doing okay, I'm doing better than my dad, I'm doing better than my brother, I'm doing better than my mom, I'm doing better than my classmates, and you're content. By the way, that just may be your number one enemy. But whether it's any of the ones I just shared with, or the first one, you may wanna like make a list of it. You know how many times I've done this? Names that drove me 20 years ago, I don't even think about today. 
Things that drove me 15 years ago as enemies today. I forgot about it today. I'm reminding myself while I'm making this video today and I'm telling you some of these stories. The clubs, my friends, I have two names in my mind. Names that drove me 10 years ago don't drive me today. Or things on this list from five years ago. But I created a vision board last week. And this crazy vision board that I was making last week had faces on it that I would have never put on a vision board because I am more driven by enemies that are holding my kids back from their dreams becoming a reality with a certain socialist mindset or trying to impose certain beliefs on them. Those are enemies that generate incredible energy for me. At 44 years old, while I'm the wealthiest I've ever been, I have the best life I've ever had. But I need those for myself. So if Messi needs it, if Musk, the richest man in the world, needs it, if people like myself needs it, maybe you need it as well. What do you think? So take a sheet of paper, take the PDF from today on 10 different types of enemies and start writing things next to it. Names and all that stuff. Anyways, so if you want to get the PDF from today's uh, episode, click here so you can make the list of your enemies or watch another video I, I did, I want to say four or five years ago, titled How to Go Up Against the Goliath of Your Industry. If you've never watched that video, click here to watch it. Take care, everybody. Good luck with your enemies. <laughs>